This is a great example of how when it gets hard, it's not that hard if you've got a reliable way to start a problem off, right? So without really even trying here, I know exactly what I'm gonna to need to do. I'm gonna to need to plug points into equations, right? That's my main strategy. Every time I see something new, I'm always thinking, do I have points, do I have equations? I definitely have points, that's what that chart is. And I definitely have equations, right? This g of x equals f of x over x plus three, that's an equation. So I can plug stuff in. It's messy, but it, it's something, right? It's just function notation, right? So let's start with like an easy point here. Maybe we start with the, the zero out of kind of habit and, and an attraction to those zeros. So if I plug that point in here, right, what am I really saying? That g of nine, right, so g of nine is equal to zero. So I would say, okay, that means the zero is my g of x. So zero is equal to, well, x is negative nine. Right, so put that negative nine in for all the x's. That includes this one here. So f of negative nine over negative nine plus three. So okay, so that zero is equal to f of negative nine over negative nine plus three is negative six. But if I got rid of the, the negative six, if I just cross multiplied here, that would just go away. So I would have that f of negative nine oop, is equal to zero. Now we have to be careful because that is not the same as this. That's a trap, right? We might really want that to be the answer because it kind of looks like a, a y-intercept, which is what we want. Um, I mean, technically it is a y-intercept, right? But what we're working with is technically an x-intercept, right? It's where the y-coordinate is equal to zero. We have an x. So right now, I don't know what to do with this. I don't have an f equation, so I, I can't really use it. But, all right, well, let's plug another point into the equation, right? Why not? Because I got nothing better to do. So now I'm gonna plug in this point here. So the five is my g of x, so five is equal to, and my uh, x is 21, f of 21 over 21 plus three. So five is equal to f of 21 divided by 24. And then again, let's just clean it up, right? Why not? Let's multiply both sides by 24, and we get that f of 21 is equal to, uh, that would be 120. And now I'm in better territory. Because now if I go back to the question, what, what do I know? I know f is a linear function. And if I have just two points, I can build the equation of any line. And that's what I've got, right? They're written in function notation, but these are x and y coordinates, right? When x is negative nine, y is zero. When x is 21, y is 120 on the f graph, right? Because we're not interested in the g graph anymore. That's just kind of a, a step we've got to go through to, to get to f, right? So we're interested in the f and we're looking for its y-intercept. So now there's a couple of ways you can go about this. Um, I'm going to build it using uh, the slope formula, which I almost never use, right? So I use the slope formula as y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. You may have learned it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I think that that's stupid. One comes before two. Why are you putting two first? That's dumb. It's a dumb thing that they teach you and they shouldn't teach you that because it just makes the formula more confusing. The point is, as long as we have the same point at the beginning on the top and the bottom and the same point at the end on the top and bottom, we're good. All this formula is really trying to do is keep us organized. The ones and the twos are purely cosmetic. So let's start with the red point first. So that's gonna be zero minus, and then the other y is 120 over negative nine minus 21. So I kind of did it in a way that's gonna involve some negatives, but that's okay. Negative 120 over, that's gonna be negative 30. And so that reduces to the zeros cancel, four. So that is the slope of this line, but I want the y-intercept of this line. So at this point, I would just pick one of the points and kind of make a y equals mx plus b equation. So let's do y equals mx plus b and plug points into that equation now, right? So we have, uh, let's use the, yeah, let's use the, the 120, I guess. I'd rather not have negative numbers. So 120 is my y, m is four, 21 is x. We are solving for b, that is what we want. That's the y-intercept. So 120 is equal to 84 plus b. Let's subtract 84 from both sides. And now I would reach for the calculator. Uh, 120 minus 84 is 36. And that is equal to b, and that is choice a, and that is the answer. This is an awesome question. If you are really struggling with math and you feel like, oh, you know, I, I, the, the actual test is way harder than the practice test. I don't know what to do. I see questions I've never seen before. 
you're wrong. You are wrong. There are questions you've seen before. Obviously, they look different. They read different. They have different equations and numbers, and, and they're giving you the information in new ways. But they have gave us points and equations. That's how most questions work on the SAT. They give you points and equations. So here, it can be you know, more obvious that that's what they're giving us. The only thing is you have to have the confidence and the strategy to just take the point and plug it in. We also need to know how function notation works, so that might be a little rusty for you if you're not you know, in an advanced math class in school. But um, basically, all I did was plug points in to equations at every step of the way, right? I did it for the first point because I wanted to try it. It didn't help me completely, but I didn't erase it and abandon ship. I did another point and hey, what do you know? It gave me now two points and because I needed a line, I was able to find that equation because sometimes you provide the equation, right? Y equals mx plus b is not something they told us to use, but we know it, we know it exists and the slope formula is also kind of an equation. So we're plugging that into those things too. So anytime you're stuck on a, on a hard math question, ask yourself, do I have points? Do I have equations? Are there equations I can provide? Are there points I can make up? It, it's just the same questions over and over again. You just They're just combined in different ways. But plug points into equations is such a great strategy because it keeps us coming back to the same idea no matter what crazy thing the College Board decides to give us.